I'm admittedly not a good plant mommy. This was my last attempt, and I vowed never again would I buy another house plant. But today I'm gonna break that promise. I'm going in search of one particular succulent that should be very common in big box stores and also pretty hard to kill. Okay, wish me luck. Oh, here it is. This one I literally found a block from my apartment. This plant's common name is Sedum morganianum, or the burrow's tail. The crazy thing about this plant is that it was cultivated and described to science in the 1930s, but then people straight up forgot where it came from. For 75 years, no scientist had any clue what the native habitat of the burrow's tail was. It was a complete and total mystery. Here's the story of how the original home of one of the most common houseplants in the world was forgotten and then rediscovered. In English, we call this plant the burro's tail or donkey's tail. In Spanish, it's sometimes known as the cola de borrego or, or sheep's tail, which is a much better descriptor. It's easy to cultivate from leaves and is propagated all over the world. Speaking of how easy they are to propagate, I rescued or stole some pieces off a succulent that had fallen to the ground in a Home Depot. And look, they're already turning into little baby plants. So the crazy thing about this is that all burro's tails found all over the world are actually a single clone derived from one plant collected in 1935 in Mexico by a guy named Eric Walter. This is getting heavy. Walter was a German botanist working for a US arboretum and he went down to Mexico in search of new species. He was big into Echeveria, which is another succulent that you might recognize from Home Depots and Walmarts. So while he was waiting to go look for his favorite plants, Walter was pulled into a plant store, El Jardín Flotante. And there he saw meters long burrow tail plants cascading out of these tin cans, almost covering the one wall of the shop. I actually saw something similar on the side of an office building when I was in Mexico City a few months back. Walter had never seen anything like this, so he bought a couple of the plants in the tin cans. Essentially, he and I did the same thing, except he went to Mexico and I went to the Home Depot gardening center. So Walter brought the plants back to the US, which then spread clonally all around the world via leaf cuttings. But people had no idea where the plant was originally from. They assumed it was somewhere near the nursery, which was in a place called Coatepec in Veracruz, due east of Mexico City. The store actually still exists, so they've changed the name, and you can see it on Google Street View. But in the decades since the burro's tail was bought from the plant store, searches for it in the wild came up empty-handed. That is until 2010, when scientist David Jimeno announced that at long last, he had found the wild burro's tail. It wasn't near the original nursery at all. Instead, it was on a horse farm far to the south, a place called Beauregard de Sochiapa, owned by a fellow named Carlos Rose who showed him where the plant grew. The place is now an, an eco-preserve and it's just gorgeous. They offer like ecological tours and adventure tours if, if you're interested, so I'll put the link down below. So the ranch consists of a large plateau surrounded by deep ravines, and it's on those cliff walls that they rediscovered the natural habitat of the burro's tail. So I'm not a botanist, but I am something of a scientist myself. And when I'm feeling particularly down, I think about how papers that take me years of my life to write are gonna be read by so few people. But then I think about how I read other people's papers and they get me excited about science all over again. And this account of how they rediscover the natural habitat of the burro's tail is one of those papers. I'm very glad that they solved a mystery older than most people about the original home of a succulent sold in bodegas and gardening centers around the world. My life, and hopefully now yours, is enriched for knowing a bit about it. We do this kind of you know, basic science, science without a, an immediate practical importance, for the same reason we take care of a plan. Because it's cool, and it's better than not doing it. So I'll end by saying thanks very much, muchas gracias, to Carlos Ros, David Jimeno, Miguel Charasso, and all the other scientists for their efforts. If you like these kinds of sciencey videos, uh, please do consider subscribing. I've got a lot more planned for the rest of the year. I literally found this one two blocks from my apartment. It's got, oh Jesus. So I'm gonna take this, hold it here, and then drop it. Drop it. I'm dropping it, you're gonna catch it. How am I catching it? I can't be smiling, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be serious. <laughs> Having you curled up naked underneath me is just inherently funny. Okay, let me make sure you don't get your naked self in the shot. I think you already have, but... I don't care. Thank you, Ned.